our family because, you see, I was a baby. Uh -huh. And so everybody in my family are gone. Uh -huh. But I just can't imagine that anybody reading this history of me would, would remember Mr. Roar. I just can't imagine. Well, it it's possible, and certainly we want to preserve the memories because it's yeah. very, very interesting. Yeah. So I just wanted to say that we are at the Atlanta History Center today. It's Memorial Day of 2006, May the 29th. We are talking with Dorothy Rora Claiborne and her daughter Mary Ann Johnston, and I am Frances Westbrook, a staff member here at the History Center. <clears throat> and Mrs. Claiborne, thank you so much for coming today to share your memories. Do you want to begin by telling me your birth date and where you were born and grew up? All right. My family came from Kentucky, and as a young man looking for work, there were a little more opportunities in Atlanta than where he lived in Kentucky, in Middlesbrough. And they came here with one child, and my member, because I wasn't born until later, but I can remember hearing them talk that they came here with one child, and then uh, he had a, he had a, he was a merchant. He had a paint store. He had Georgia Paint and Glass Wallpaper Company down on Lucky Street, and we lived on Boulevard, right in the district where we had the Atlanta farm. And I was just four years old when it started, but my memory is from hearsay. Everybody talked about the fire from that day on. It was just a conversation piece that mm -hmm. I don't guess we'll ever forget it. Right. So my family left the house, or rather the, my father had, was known to have a big library of first editions and so uh, his friends, my sister's friends, all came by in cars, they told me, to pick up all his books mm -hmm. before he got there. Well, he was so determined that it was too far away in that beginning because it was way downtown, but the day of the fire, the wind was blowing so strong that it blew and would get ahead of itself. And by the time, and he told them that he didn't want the books disturbed. So by the time that they realized it was coming their way and would be there, they, they had closed the streets off and would not let a car come up. So our family just lost everything. Oh. It was really a, all the furniture. I can remember my mother crying a lot of her life, mm -hmm. of, of knowing that we would never have any anything that they had brought with them, and that was old in the family. And all the books were lost too. And all the books were taken mm -hmm. and gone. But the day after the fire, when they it was all just blown out and they, there was just nothing but cinders, he took me as a child, as a baby. I was just four years old. I guess to entertain me over there with a rake, and he was raking all over the whole property that we lived on to see if he could find, come up with anything that had not burned. What and that's my memory of that fire. Amazing. And I'm talking about it all my early life. That was just all they talked about. It was a real horrible experience. So that's our, my early beginning in Atlanta. Yes. But after yes. that, we yes. moved to Ansley Park. It was just a big farm at that time and was beginning to be sold in lots. And then all this is hearsay that <laughs> I remember hearing as a child. Mm -hmm. And we came over to Ansley Park, Laura House and that was where I was brought up mm -hmm. in Ansley Park. On What's 50 that? South Prado. 50 South Prado. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to remember the address or can we find out the address on Boulevard? I can find out. It's in my baby book. That would be nice to have. That would be nice to know it would too. Be nice. Uh huh. I should have looked it up this morning because I don't remember the number. So then, did you grow up on South Prado? I did. Went to South Prado and went to the public schools. Mm -hmm. One of them was Tenth Street, mm -hmm. which was a wonderful school in those days. I don't think there's ever a better school anywhere than Tenth Street School. And then after Tenth Street, I went to O'Keefe, which was a beginning of a new high school, the junior, junior high. Mm -hmm. But in its first stages, it introduced us to another side of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And it was for a girl like me, it was scary because mm -hmm. I had not known, it, it was kind of a rough element. Mm -hmm. And I was scared the whole time I went to that school. Mm -hmm. My family didn't know it, but I had wished I had not gone there. 
but I followed believe, in public education until you got to be a certain age, and then he allowed me to go to private school, which mm -hmm. I did. I ended up at the seminary, Washington Seminary. And that's my school years, although my parents died before I finished the seminary. They died mm -hmm. in their 50s. Back in those mm -hmm. days, people didn't live as long as they're living now. Mm -hmm. Both of my parents were in their 50s. So I went off to a boarding school in Virginia for mm -hmm. a couple of years. And then I went up to New York, lived with my sister for a year. So I got around in the yeah. senior year, in the, in the high school years. Can you go back and tell me a little bit about the telescope your father had? Yes, it was a seven inches, I remember hearing. It was a big telescope, and um, it was on, on a balcony. I guess you'd call it sort of a balcony off of one of the bedrooms upstairs. And it was just a perfect place for it. And um, the only thing is that Atlanta had a lot of lights, and so it really wasn't as perfect to mm -hmm. see the stars because the lights of the city dimmed them. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that was what we, we lived with, was with a telescope all the time. Was this at the South Prado house? Or? South Prado, okay. yeah, that's right. Yeah. You might tell them about the... It was after the fire on Boulevard. You might yeah. tell them about the observatory down in Miami. What? You, you might tell them about the observatory down in Miami. Well, every winter, my father would leave here and go to Miami where he, the stars, you could really see them there. There was no lights and it was... So he started a observatory down there, and it's still in existence. He'd take a telescope each year. He went for seven years, left the home, and went down, and my mother didn't go because we were all in school here. Mm -hmm. And uh, he left the telescope there every year, and it's called the, um, my memory's so terrible, but anyway, he started the park down there with these telescopes, and then since then, they were anti uh, antiques now, and I've mm -hmm. been there to see them, and they have built a Observatory, where they put these mm -hmm. in. That's fascinating. And you, you, did you say that's in Miami? In Miami. Mm -hmm. Can't remember the name of that park. Not so well, we can cross. look that up. That's Maybe very interesting. Maybe you can look it up. Mm -hmm. We have that whole documentation of that obituary that was written for it's all an astronomical, obituary. I know it. An astronomical society. You said he was a member of the Royal Astronomical Society. Where is the obituary? It was. In a scrapbook? No, it's right there in the Chester drawer. It is in yeah. the Chester drawer? Mm -hmm. we, we looked at it the other day. All right. Mm -hmm. So it's a three-pager if you really are interested in seeing that. Very much. Mm -hmm. That's we very interesting. That we could put that with this. So did, did you go down with him then? Did you say you did? No, Mother stayed home she with She stayed home with all the children. All the children. Yeah. Home. He see. went by himself. But you've been there since. Very interesting. So I remember those days. Very interesting. Papa just went by himself. Mm -hmm. So then you finished high school. So then I finished Washington Seminary. Mm -hmm. And I didn't go back off to school. I had had enough being away from Atlanta. And I moved to Marietta with my sister because she was then became my mother. She was seven years older than I. And she had married a Marietta boy, Mr. Montgomery, Wallace Montgomery. And what was her name? What was your sister's name? What was your sister's name? My sister's name was Mary Rora Montgomery. I see. And uh, they were living in New York when I lived with them at first. Mm -hmm. And he lost his job, like everybody was losing jobs in 1932, mm -hmm. and had to come home. And his home was Marietta. So we all came back to Marietta and lived there. And those were very good years for me because Atlanta's a big city and my mother always worried because she was raising her family here in a big city and she had lived in a small town in Kentucky mm -hmm. and she knew it was a better, more, better living in a small mm -hmm. town. So after she died, I did get to move to Marietta and those were very happy days at Marietta. Mm -hmm. And that's when I met my husband. He was a preacher's son. His father was Episcopal minister in the St. James Church in Marietta. And uh, he had gone through school there, and then he had gone to the University of Virginia, and had just graduated the year I moved up there. I had just graduated from high school. He just graduated from medicine, mm -hmm. UVA. 
medical school, and I met him then in 38, no, no, in 32, 32, and we married in 37. So that's the story of my early life. That's great. And where did you live then after you were married? After we married, we came here, and he wanted to live near our church. He's called, he just was so used to being a minister's family, so I was not an Episcopalian. I was a Presbyterian, North Avenue Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. And um, he just said to me before we married that he really would like to live near a church. So I picked the cathedral, mm -hmm. and we lived in the old Hall Hammer up here our first year or two. Mm -hmm. And then we moved. We were lucky we found a house. Looking around on Sunday, Mary was our first baby. And uh, we just put her in the car, and we just ride around looking for a house, because we knew we didn't want to stay in the Alhambra too long, because it was so cramped. And we were riding around every Sunday with her in the car, and um, there'd be signs of, of homes that were for sale. And this happened to be the first one we saw, was the corner of Normandy Drive and West Wesley. Well, there was not a Normandy Drive at that point. There was no road. It was Normandy. Was it a drive, though? Yeah, it was just it wasn't a, a paved. It wasn't paved, it was a, a, path. a dirt street. Was it even dirt or just oh, well, a, path? Was a path? It was a path. It was a path. It was a path. I don't think it was named anything. It really was not no, paved. It was a path. But it is a street now. It's, it's normally a street dry. Yeah. And that, by the way, was named for a family who lived in the house that we bought. Mr. Norman D. Burke. And he told us at the time we bought this old house. It was a farmhouse. Very interesting. And that at the time before we saw it, it had had 20 acres right there on West Wesley. And by the time we saw it and bought it, it had dwindled down to two acres. So the house was sitting on two acres. Mm -hmm. All the land behind it had been sold. Interesting. Normandy Drive. And I think the current owners, Celia Dyer and her husband, have given us a long list of dates that tells us all the they can figure out about the previous owners and the history of that property is very yeah, interesting. Yeah, because I didn't sell it to Miss Dyer. It's very interesting. I sold it to someone else. Oh, I in between. Before, uh -huh. And then they've just recently bought it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So you, but you stayed there for a long time. I stayed there 60 years, just 60 years. Wow. And then when the war came, and my husband decided he really wanted to join, and he got himself into the Emory unit. He had not gone to Emory, but they were starting a, a, a hospital and we called it the 43rd General Hospital. Mm -hmm. And he decided in the kind of medicine he could do, he could not be in a station hospital in the war. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't be good because he was not a surgeon. Mm -hmm. And so when he heard that the Emory was forming this hospital, he joined Mm -hmm. And he went right away, and he was in the law for three years. Well, at that time, by the time he left us, I had two babies. Two and four. Mary was four, oh. and Dottie, my other child, was, was two. Isn't that right? Two and four. That's what they were. Well, that's when you went down to Louisiana. Huh? That's when you were in Louisiana, before he left to go to North Africa. Well, we, yeah. well, he was in the war three years, but the first year he left home and he called back in about a week or two and told us that they were going to be training in Louisiana, mm -hmm. that he would not be gone, and for me to get on down there. So we high-footed it, right. and we got down there very fast. The whole group mm -hmm. of wives and children went to Louisiana. You must and have made some lucky we stayed there friends. a whole year. Yeah. Did you make a lot of good friends? Yes, well, they were mm -hmm. friends. It just so happened that this unit, we knew all the people okay. in there, so it was very good. Yes. Very good. So you were there for a year? One year. Uh -huh. And then we came back home as soon as they were called and left and went to Africa. That's uh -huh. where they were called to. Uh -huh. And um, then we all just came back to our own homes. But in the meantime, I had rented it, so I had to um, ask them to get out because uh -huh. I was going back to it. Uh, I was trying to think that before we rented it, 
I had gone to Mary, and I'm thinking I was going to be there the whole duration of the war, so I called my sister, who had married a married boy and was living in Maryland, and so I asked her to please see if she could find us a house or apartment, apartment first. She said there were no apartments in that day and time, and Mary had all homes, and she was very happy to report that the next day after I called her that there was a person next door to her in a vacant lot that was measuring, and she called back to tell me that this man was measuring to build a small little house for purposes to rent. And so we talked to him and said immediately we wanted that house. So I was lucky again Gary. that here we were. That was and I was with these two little children. Mm -hmm. And we lived right next door to her. And then, then after we'd been there a little while, he called back and said that they were going to be in Louisiana for a while and were not going overseas right mm -hmm. yet. So it was to all come down there. Mm -hmm. And he found us a place mm -hmm. to live in Louisiana. So we were there a whole year before he was called. They went first to Africa. But you stayed up there while he was in Africa. You stayed in Oh, yeah, he went to Africa. I'm just saying yep. the first place he went was Africa. Yep. And then they left after and went to Italy. This is the mm -hmm. hospital he was in. Then they went to Italy, and then, then they went in on southern invasion of France. Mm -hmm. And that's why they stayed the whole war, was in France. And he wrote a journal, which and is, he wrote a he journal donated he, to the History Center. That we have a copy. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. It told us the whole story of what he was doing. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, here you are, a young, young mother. What did you do during those war years? Did you well, take part in rolling bandages or no, that sort no, of activity? No, I had two babies. Yes. And I wasn't about, I'm a mm -hmm. stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I didn't have any career mm -hmm. to even worry with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was busy, busy. Did you do anything such as a victory guard? Yeah, I used to know, but I did go out to um, the hospital, the um, general hospital. It um, did some work out there, and I'm trying to think, what did I do? In Atlanta? Or In Atlanta. We had a hospital, you know, out there. That's the name of it. You mean an army hospital? What? An army hospital? Well, it was at the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell how your mind just been too long ago. But we used to all go out there and do some work, and I was just mm -hmm. trying to think, what did I do? Something out there. There were patients out there? There were patients that were brought back. Uh -huh. It was a little it was a general hospital. And what did you say this was Marietta? No, this is Atlanta. Atlanta. Grady? It wasn't no, no, Grady, no, this is no hospital that you Crawford have. Long. No, no, mm -hmm. all those are well, Atlanta we're... hospitals. This was made up just for the war. Oh. And I don't know why I cannot remember the name of the hospital. Oh, was it an army base or an air it's force? It's an army hospital. It was only. We can find out. You can I'm find sure. out. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And we used to go, group of us would go out there for some. What we did, I could not tell you. Mm -hmm. It's been too long ago. Well, we can check into that. What? We can check into you that. You check and see what's the name of it. Now, going back a little bit to the beginning of the war, do you remember when Pearl Harbor was attacked? Yes, I definitely remember because doing? I remember what I was doing. We what were walking up the street on Normandy one Sunday afternoon, and we heard that they had been attacked. And we all knew that the war had started. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that's when the men all, when the unit got started, mm -hmm. right about that time. Probably someone had heard it on the radio, and I bet everybody was everybody talking was about it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And then going on, what about when the bomb, was, the atomic bomb was dropped? Do you remember that? Well, Any reaction about I that? I should remember, but I was too busy raising these yes. children to, to really keep up day That's by right. day with the wall, but I do remember, of course, what happened. And one other event, do you remember when Roosevelt... Uh, died in the news at that Yes. Died. Somehow I do remember that mm -hmm. because a train came through here with him on it. Oh. He died in Warm Springs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, we were told that he was being brought from Warm Springs back to Washington. Mm -hmm. And it so happened that I had a very good friend here in Atlanta that was a doctor's daughter who was a doctor to the president and he had access to the Warm Springs house. 
when the president wasn't there, he was there. Because he took care of people at Papersons at Warm Springs. He was a surgeon. And she was my best friend. And we, I used to go down there and stay in the president's house with her. So, yes, Wonderful. I was going to go right in with that. You had more of a first hand contact yeah. than most people would. Very interesting. Did you ever see him? The president? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. If I ever really saw him face to face, I can't remember. I can't remember that I ever, ever did. I'm sure I did, but on a train, he might have been on a train going through. Yes. We might have all gone down to a train and just seen him. But and were your parents supportive of, of Roosevelt? They were Democrats. What? Your parents were Democrats, so they would have voted for Roosevelt. I don't. I really don't know. Wasn't your father a Democrat? Didn't he go to Democratic conventions? My father? Uh -huh. Yes, but you see, he was gone in 1929. The war, you know, that was born until 40. What, three or four? That's true. He had already died. Oh, yeah. No. no, he was just very interested in the uh, the Democratic Party mm -hmm. in those days. I don't think he'd be that interested now, but anyway, he was in those days. And he went to all the Democratic conventions because he was a delegate. Why well, I remember that because he traveled a lot and mainly went to San Francisco. That's why those meetings were a lot of them were in San Francisco. And they'd bring me back with Chinese babies, dolls. You know, just little things that I don't know back in those little days. Gifts. Well, Mrs. Clayton, when you were raising the two little children during yeah. the war years, yes. were you affected by shortages or well, having to ration Yes, things? we had um, what they called um, stamps. And um, everybody had to watch sugar, for mm -hmm. one thing, mm -hmm. and um, meats. But I had a family, my husband's sister, and her husband lived in Marietta, too, beside my own sister lived in that. And they were wonderful to me because um, it was their brother that I had married. And so when they, we never had frozen food lockers or anything like that up until the war. Then all of a sudden, up in Marietta, someone built a frozen food building, just a small one and would sell the lockers, and you could buy your food ahead of time and put it in the lockers. Well, they were very good to me because I had a locker, and they would, my brother-in-law would buy more than he needed, or he, he had a farm, and so he had extra things, and I'd put them in the locker. So I was very well off during the war. You know, I didn't have a big family, just mm -hmm. had two babies to feed myself, but we were well cared for. Interesting. Tell about what? the gas, though. Tell about the gas, gas, gasoline rationing. Well, of course, and it was a gas rationing, yes. And so that was a difficult part because I couldn't go back and forth to Mary, to Atlanta from mm -hmm. Maryland. It, it took, took too much gas. Mm -hmm. So we did very little traveling. Now, what was your brother-in-law's name? Mr. Willingham. Mr. Robert Willingham. He was, um, he had a big company called the Willingham Little Stone Company up in, um, not, it wasn't at Blairsville. Was it at Blairsville? I think it was yeah. Blairsville. Uh, it was Whitestone. Whitestone? Was it Whitestone, yeah. And they lived in Maryland. This is my husband's sister who was married to Mr. Willingham. And they were just very good. And they had a little boy right between you and daddy age. And so they really took care of us. And they did have a farm. Players. Well, they had a farm. They didn't live there, but no, they went but there every weekend. That, and that's where the cattle were. That's where yeah, you get the, the cattle meat. was up there. Uh -huh. But we were well cared for. No question about it. Well, definitely having that freezer was a huge help. But having the freezer was a big help. Big help. And that all happened during the war. We never did have frozen foods before mm -hmm. that. That was um, a new innovation to have frozen foods. So then finally what? the war ended and your husband could come home. Yes, he came home. He did. And um, he
he, of course, had been practicing in Atlanta since we married. He had been in Boston with the Leahy Clinic mm -hmm. up to the time we married, and he chose to come home to Atlanta rather than practicing in Boston, which I was very thankful for, I can tell you, because I thought he might stay up there. And it wouldn't have been a horror, but it wouldn't have been as good as and he said, well, he had been raised in the South himself, and he just thought he'd like to raise his children in the South, so he came here, although he'd been raised in Marietta. But um, Lana was a better singer for his practice. He was an internist, heart man. So, Didn't he start the Georgia Heart Association? Yeah. He helped found that. Uh-huh. Or did found that. He did. Mm -hmm. You're running. Very outstanding. Well, now, I've got a son here practicing. He's a GI doctor. Mm -hmm. I'm so lucky because my husband died, and I sure depended on him health-wise, too. So, mm -hmm. But Tom, my son, mm -hmm. is taking over. He takes care of all of us. Although Mary Ann lives away, you do use him some, don't no. you? Think? Huh. Dottie does. I do not. You don't. You've got your own doctor. That's right. Yeah, so, but too far away. Now, is Thomas, Tom, your son, is he a junior? He's or a junior. He's uh -huh. a junior. He's a junior. And your other, the two daughters' names again, what are their names? She's Mary Ann mm -hmm. Johnston, mm -hmm. and Dottie is Dottie Clayman Duke, D-U-K-E. She is married to an astronaut, Charlie Duke. From South Carolina. Very interesting. And um, they live in Texas. Mm -hmm. But and they get over here quite a bit. He had so. a unique career as an astronaut. Yes. Well, she met him in Boston. He was going to MIT. To prepare yourself to be an astronaut, there's a lot you have to be, have to do, and have trained. So he was in training for doing the things that you have to do to be picked. He was not one when she married him. And she met him in Boston and told us, you know, that he was there at MIT getting to be a um, master's or whatever you get it, in um, astronaut engineering. Engineering. Astronaut. Engineering. Astronaut. Uh -huh. engineering. So he yeah. was getting prepared to be. But we felt once she wrote us and told us about this boy that if they had fallen in love, that maybe it wouldn't take them. Maybe they wouldn't be married. Hopefully they wouldn't because in those days we considered anyone going into that program just going to kill themselves. Mm -hmm. Not knowing whether anybody could land on the, on the moon or even live on the moon. Mm -hmm. But no, he didn't change his mind and he was picked. Mm -hmm. So. We have lived through a very exciting life with her Indeed. and him. Indeed. He made the flight 16, so he was not the first one on the run. Mm -hmm. He was almost the last. Where were you when you watched the flight? You must Down have... in Texas with her, mm -hmm. in her little home there in Texas. We, we were actually at Cape Kennedy. What? They might have called it Cape Canaveral when they, when they took Cape off. Cape Canaveral, yeah. yeah. Took off. So but you you're went. right, when he was walking, we were down in Texas. Really? But we saw the actual liftoff. We were all there, aren't you with us there? Yeah, at Cape Kennedy, I mm -hmm. remember the liftoff. No, 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 a, yeah, there, but I mean, and then we were down, down, yeah. down his house, mm -hmm. weren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I thought. Well, I can't imagine the feelings of having a close family member. It was very traumatic. TV I'll tell you. and on the moon and seeing this. Not happen. knowing, you know. I mean, how did you? Can you recall some of the way you felt, or just well, amazing? They had always been. You see, this is fortunate for us. Mm -hmm. There had been landings. You see, he was like what sixteen did I say? Apollo sixteen. But they didn't start it. But they started number eleven to begin with, and then they went up to sixteen, and they went one past him, seventeen. But by that time, you see, we had seen him go and come when he went. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't as hair raising, mm -hmm. although, you know, it wasn't easy because mm -hmm. the plane did something real funny right at first. The paint started coming off of it. 
when they got into, you know, there was a certain air where they, that was scary. We didn't know what was happening, but they had trained the girls, the wives of these early astronauts for things that might happen. Mm -hmm. And so when we were sitting there with her, it was wonderful to be able to turn to her and say, now what's that going on? Mm -hmm. you know, and then she look at some papers <laughs> that she had and kind of cool us down. That's very good. But it was very exciting, mm -hmm. I can tell you that. We were glad when it was all over. Mm -hmm. I bet. He's been a real good person going out and talking about it. Mm -hmm. He's a very good speaker. And uh, it, it's asked, he goes a lot of places and talks about it. Mm -hmm. So he's in demand. He's a very easy speaker. Yes. And good speaker. Mm -hmm. I have well, seen his, I think he's spoken at the Cathedral of St. Philip. Has he? I, I think he me. might have. Seems you think he has? I Maybe think he so. might have. I have forgotten if he had. There's some connection there, I'm sure. So this that. you're saying. Mm -hmm. Well. So you've had quite an interesting lot of different experiences. Yes, we have. But I want to tell you about my boy. We, when we were left, these two girls and I, mm -hmm. my husband went to war. Well, the whole time, our conversation, my conversation mm -hmm. to them, they weren't talking too much was that when your daddy comes home, we're going to have a boy, and his name's going to be Tommy. <laughs> and I really put my neck out, because we wanted a boy, I can mm -hmm. tell you that. The family did carry the name, and so we just, that was our conversation, out to them. Mm -hmm. And so sure enough, after daddy came home, we had a boy, and we were terribly lucky, and we know it. <laughs> it could have been another girl. It sure could have. <laughs> it sure could have. It sure could have. We would have loved it too. But, That's right. But this was right. just a very extra special. Mm -hmm. Very extra special. Especially since you had basically promised it. This is what would happen. That's right. So, that's great. I think that's the story of my life. Well, you just had a wonderful experience. Story of my life. I've been very lucky. Very interesting. I have. Very lucky. Because any time I needed help or someone to take care of me, and there was somebody right there to do it. Which I, I look back on because my sister was the closest to me, seven years difference in our age. Mm -hmm. And when I lost both parents, so my early. other sisters had died. One of them oh. died in childbirth. She was 16 years old when I was born. Goodness. My other sister was 18. She was off at Holland's College when I was born. 18 years old, so they turned out to be mothers instead of mm -hmm. sisters. Mm -hmm. Then I had a brother mm -hmm. named Rip, Rora, and um, he was 16 years old or 17 years old. So they were all adults to mm -hmm. me, mamas and daddies. Yes. Now the one you lived near to in Marietta was my sister that was seven was years old. Did she have, she had the little boy? She had one boy. That was sort of in between. So There was no, what? No, she, she had an older son. Oh, an Wallace. older son. Oh, yeah, she had a child. He's at least how many years older? Well, he's at to least you all. probably eight or nine older than I am. Oh, way older, but I was just trying to think how many years older. He was born in 32. Okay, then. Up in New York. Okay. When well, I was living just, with them. He's just six years older than I am. What? Six years older than I am. Is that all just six years old? I think it's 32. I was born in 38. That's right. Well, that's what it is. It's my mm -hmm. father's sister who had a child between my sister. I see. I see. My father's sister, not my mm -hmm. mother's sister. I see. Randy Willingham was right between Dottie and me in age. Randy, you don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> well, Mary Ann, is there some things you'd like to ask your mom to embellish upon, embellish upon and put on the tape? Well, Mom, you want to tell her you did move back to Atlanta to the house, right? You left Marietta, came as oh, soon yeah, as the we war was over. We, we, it was all over. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Came back. And what did you do to the house since they have been interested? Well, at that time, you see, we had not done a thing before because we, you know, the war came and there was no way to touch the house, but we knew, when we first went in it even, that we wanted to remodel it a little bit because it had four little teeny weeny bedrooms, which was just suited us fine because we wanted to increase our family. 
But um, it was a, a real farmhouse. Mm -hmm. So we had a very good friend named Clem Ford, who was an architect here in Atlanta. And he came and we told him what we wanted done, and he did a very good job, but not complete. Just We, we just did what we had to do after the war to make it a little more up to date. So my husband died in, uh, what year? 68? Uh, 86, 86, 86, 86, 87. Uh-huh. And um, so I stayed on another 10 years after he died by myself. Mm. So I was in the house 60 years mm. when I lived there. But the rest of them are all just 50 years, I guess. But I was very happy to stay there. Yes. Then by the time uh -huh. I did decide to leave and go to Canberra, I was ready to go. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice place to live. That's true. I recommend it. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great place. Well, thank so, you so well, much. I this hope is I've just given very, you some detail. very interesting. And thank you for sharing your stories. Well, I was stories so with glad us. that this couple now that have the house, they seem to be so happy to be there. Very much so. Very much. Mm -hmm. She's an enthusiastic person. And they're taking good care of the house. Oh, yes. Oh, which yeah. is always gratifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I sold it to someone. When I moved after being there by myself to a couple that took it as an Art Nouveau house. And I don't know the names, I've even forgotten who they were. But they made the front door red and the back door blue. And I happened to have gone in the house one day after I had been over there doing something in the yard or picking something. And she didn't call me to come in. And I went in and I was so shocked that I, I, just, I was hurt because. The house was a farmhouse, and she had made it this Art Nouveau with striped wallpaper, taking out all this old paper, striped wallpaper, reds and blues, and oh, I mean, just a horror. So I wasn't very happy to see that. Mm -hmm. So when these people bought it, the second time around, why, she recognized the house was, you know, really a, an old country house. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so she's doing some remodeling and big remodeling. Mm -hmm. They're going to have a lovely home when they yeah. finish. Well, it is a beautiful house. I've seen the pictures of it. It's very appealing. Well, it's, it's lovely. It, well, it was, it was just a country house, I'll tell you. When they did some remodeling in our place, when mm -hmm. we were there, they, people did hammer. The workmen said they had never put the hammer through such a hard wood that they bent every nail because That's it was amazing. virgin timber. They had used the wood, the pine, mm -hmm. on the place to build the house. Very interesting. And left the, wood, left the old, old oak trees. Mm -hmm. So I had wondered why we didn't have any pines mm -hmm. until I heard from an old lady up the street from me, a country lady that had been living there. She was born on that street mm -hmm. back yonder in the early days of Normandy. And uh, she said she was a little girl when the house was built, and she remembers going down there and watching them cut down all those pine trees and making the house. Very interesting. Uh -huh. So I got a little history from her. Yes. And well, then, it's unique to have it stay so long. So many places in Atlanta do just turn over and they get changed or remodeled. Or to they even tore them down. They even tore them down. Yeah. So it's so wonderful. This house is now in the care of someone else. Yes. Really will take it really care of it. has it really taste. Values it. Real taste, she does. That's right. And money to do it. Mm -hmm. and so to I do was it just right. terribly pleased to meet her. Yes. And she's just. Well, she has loved me. She's indeed. a lovely lady. She's she lovely. Is. And, ha and so happy to be there. And that made you feel good. I know. <clears throat> Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank well, you, you so much. You want to tell her how many grandchildren and great-grandchildren oh, yes. you have? That's a good want idea. Want me to tell her how many grandchildren, grandchildren and great I have? I have seven grandchildren. How wonderful. But I have 15 great-grandchildren. Really? That's a lot of children we are having. So wonderful. Yep, this is great. Oh, that is wonderful. We have two little Guatemalans. Mm -hmm. My grandson who lives in San Francisco, he and his wife are both mm -hmm. doctors. Mm -hmm. And they never had children. And so they went down to Guatemala and adopted first one little boy. And then how many years later? A year later or two years later? Two years later. Two years later. Mm -hmm. They've adopted the second one. I was oh, glad it's another little boy. So they'd be congenial together. I bet they're adorable. And they're little 
white little children. They're not dark, mm -hmm. but they have the black, straight Indian hair. Yeah. Can you picture yeah, that? I can picture that. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's it's adorable. It's just adorable. And smiles. Oh, they have the sweetest smiles I've ever seen on a child. Oh, ever. Lovely. But the little boy, when he came here for my big birthday, 90th birthday, oh. he cried the whole time. He was sick. Oh dear. So I really didn't get to see him smile. Remember that man? Yes, he was he sick. He was sick. It's her grandchild. How wonderful. So I hope yeah. he'll come back again. He will. He'll come back. So I can see him smile. Yeah. How lovely. Well, can you tell me a little bit about your 90th birthday? Well, my 90th what birthday. My 80th, I had in my own house, and I uh -huh. was determined that, that I was going to have a celebration, because 80 is to me just like 100 <laughs> at that time. My family had died in their 50s, and I never thought about living past, oh, 60, uh -huh. 5, 70. So when I had my 80th, I called a caterer that I knew, and I said, will you come and cook this dinner? We're going to have all the family here. And it was so much fun, do you know, to have a caterer, and you sit down at your table, and <laughs> be waiting on. It was really a good birthday. But then when the 90th came, my son Tom lives in a um, condominium that has a nice entertainment area, and he decided he wanted to have it. Mm -hmm. So we had a, I called all my nephews and nieces and anybody that was pertained to us to come. And we had a pretty good crowd, didn't we? Had a huge crowd. Had a big crowd. Yeah. And we catered that one too. What? We catered that one also. Oh yeah, oh yeah, sure did. And that was about it. And that's that's the last one. Oh, we that did sounds today. wonderful. I'll have a private birthday. You don't need well, to have. We've a... had private ones since then. What? We've had private ones since then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that that's sounds nice. absolutely wonderful. Well, I just some days I think, my gosh, I cannot believe, because there was I never was around old people. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how they reacted and did. Now, my grandmother, my mother's mother, lived with us. She was up in her years, but Lord, she was in her near 90. I wish I could remember. I'll have to go find her. She's buried up in Kentucky. So someday I can go back up there and I can find out how old Moody was. And I think he was probably 79 or something like that. And we all thought that was old. Oh, this but is so interesting. We're nowadays, really... everybody's mm -hmm. living longer, so be prepared. <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> it's amazing. I know. And especially going to Canterbury, I think you live longer. Well, you... I think you enjoy life at Canterbury a lot, too. Oh, yeah. There are a lot of fun things to do, and there are fun people to be it's with. There are nice people there. And it's a lovely, lovely place. And I mean, it's just very nice. Very kindly, loving people. They really Very are. much so. Yeah. Very much so. And you don't have any stress or strain, so I feel like once you go to Canterbury, you're going to live forever. Just keep enjoying it. <laughs> yes. Look forward to the 100th, we hope. <laughs> well, I don't, know, I don't know about that. I have a friend that just absolutely walks us after death. She's, set, she's 94 or 5 now. <laughs> and I keep telling her, I said, honey, you're going to live me 200. You're not going to be living 100. You just keep in such good shape. That's Anne. Anne Little. Uh -huh. Never seen anything like her. Y'all oh. get her here to interview. <laughs> oh, that, that is sort of inspiring, isn't it? She married somebody related to the Ansleys, Little. Uh -huh. His name was Little. She keeps telling me something about Ansley. That the background of this boy was, was the Ansleys. So she might have a good story to tell you. <laughs> well, we'll have to talk to her. All right, can. maybe that would be a good one to talk it would, to. We'd yeah. very much like that. would be very interesting. Well, she's going to be here a while. She, she surprised me if she's, she's not. Yeah, she's ambulatory. She's incredible. Remarkable. Oh, yeah. If you haven't been to Canterbury in a while, you wouldn't believe what It is. has changed a great oh, deal. Oh, my goodness. The amenities are wonderful. And swimming pool and hot tubs. Amazing. Well, they have a lot of exercise for yeah. us. Yeah. No excuse I mean, not to do it. The theater now with movies every day and night. Really? And, and heavy movies. Goodness. goodness. That is amazing. But you said you had someone there at Canterbury? My mother was there. That's what I thought you told me. But it was before this major renovation. Yes. So oh, yeah. yeah. It's changed a lot. Oh, it's changed but a lot. It's still a place. Was she happy there? She was. Uh -huh. I think she was. My mother-in-law mm -hmm. was there. She was the first woman in Canterbury, Miss Cleveland. 
And uh, so I'm sure she knew your mother. Clara Claiborne. Well, now that's Clara. That's married to the bishop. Oh, yes, yes. But this is Mrs. Claiborne. I know who you mean. Did Why you don't we turn off the tape recording now? So we you did what? Let's yeah, just go ahead and we're going to wrap this up. All and right. we're gonna, I want to hear more right. about them. Okay? Mm -hmm. I just want to thank you so much for coming. And we'll go ahead and um, turn this off for just a moment. What is it? Randolph heard the two churches, the vestries, were thinking of building together this retirement home. And he heard it that they were talking about it. So he started pushing it, you know, let's get it going. And I think it was because Miss Clayton was at the age to go into a retirement home. She had three children here, my husband, Randolph, and a, and a daughter up there, that she could live with. And I mentioned it to her. I said, oh, grandmother, I said, you don't want to go there. I said, you can stay with us six months or longer, and then we go to her. She looked at me, and she said, we were real close. She said, I love you all well, but I do not want to live with any of you. Mm -hmm. And that was the way she felt. <laughs> it's smart, mm -hmm. very smart. So I helped her move in in 65. That's when it was opened. Canterbury Court. And ran up and pushing it to all the way to get it going, knowing that she was really in the right age to, to go into a retirement home. Was he already a bishop by then, your brother-in-law? Yes, I think he was. I know he was, mm -hmm. yeah, he was. Did Mrs. Claiborne like it? What? <clears throat> Did Mrs. Claiborne enjoy it there? Oh, then? yes, oh, Good. yes. She was crazy about Canterbury, very, very much. I did go and get her practically every weekend because at that time I had little people at home and I had I had help that lived on and they would be there and so I got her every weekend and I, she wanted to come and we took her to church mm -hmm. and then we'd have lunch on Sunday. I got up Saturday afternoon mm -hmm. and then we had lunch on Sunday and then we, I took her home mm -hmm. back to Canterbury. So, um, I think she enjoyed that. I know we did enjoy having her. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So that was, it was a sweet family. Clary Randolph was there. And I don't know who went first. I think it was Clara, but I'm not sure. Who died first? I think she did, didn't she, Mary? I think no, he, did. he did. You think he did? Yeah, he, did. Did. he did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they were very important there, and certainly yeah. even in the founding of it, as you say, from from yeah. his um, advocacy of having it, and his mother, your mother-in-law being the first real person there. His mother. His mother, your mother-in-law. My mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Well, thank you again well, for coming today. Well, it's been an honor. Thoroughly <laughs> indoctrinated with the Clavens. Oh, I love <laughs> it. I love it. It's wonderful. Well, thank you.